and now I'm going to do a video of an Atari Jaguar game. This is new to my collection, but it's not a new game. In fact, it's from 1994. Club Drive. And if you know about the Atari Jaguar, you might have heard of this game before. I don't really know how to categorise this game. I guess you could call it a, a sandbox game. Um, but it's also a bit of a... just a tech demo, really. So it's a sort of a racer, but there's also a collect em up mode. Uh, but it is very, very bare bones. There's a very unusual story in the instruction manual. Um, which I'll, I'll show you there. You can read that in your own time. Let's play Club Drive. This is a nice jolly tune. So you do have a few options. You've got four different areas to choose from and you've got two different modes. You've got a racing mode and a collect em up mode and you can do two players as well. And I think it's, I think it's actually two player split screen and you can also turn off the noise of the car. So here's Jerome's pad. And this is Club Drive. It's actually a, a 3D polygon third person racing game. And the race is not actually a circuit. You go from A to B and then from B back to A again. And you do technically have a little mini map at the bottom there, but it's so small that I can't really, it's not really any use to me. So that's Jerome's cat. Believe it or not, that is supposed to be a cat. I'm quite surprised they even programmed in something like that. Oh, I think that's turned me around. So the details are very, very low, which is not really surprising on a Jaguar, but I was surprised by how well this runs. Usually the Jaguar is really, really slow at 3D. So I was quite pleasantly surprised by how well this runs, even though there's really, there isn't much detail and there isn't really much going on. Not long ago, I played Toy Commander on the Dreamcast and this actually reminds me of that a little bit. It's almost like a very, very prototype version of that sort of thing.
I guess that cat just kind of roams around the house randomly. There's an interesting feature in this game, in fact. You can you can rewind yourself, which is something that I don't think I would have expected from such an early 3D game. Uh, but there are areas in the game that you can get stuck. You can just rewind yourself out of it, which is quite nice. All right, let's go to San Francisco. Being a city rather than someone's house, this is probably a much bigger map. I chose race again. And if you choose the collector map mode in San Francisco, it takes place inside a multi-story car park, which is quite boring. But this one is much more open. You can see there they've actually tried, they have actually tried to build an entire city. This is kind of interesting. And there's not actually anything in it. There's no other cars or any objectives or anything. You, <laughs> In fact, you're not even racing against a, a computer controlled car. And this is very, very bare bones. I... I did have a quick look at what the review scores were of this game originally and even back in 1994 this game got lots of really really bad really low scores like 55% uh, that sort of thing they weren't blown away by it being 3D you've got to have a game in there too actually there's quite a bit of detail on those buildings Right, so I found the tunnel. Remember, I'm trying to get from A to B. Ooh, let's rewind out of there. This bit's quite tricky. I did get completely stuck in here once um, because sometimes you rewind and you go back as far as you can possibly go and you just fall back down into the water again and you're just stuck in a constant loop of, of getting rewound out of it and falling back in. It is quite a nice feature actually. There's no, there's no game over or anything like that and you don't lose lives or take damage. I do kind of wonder what people thought of the game at the time. Because if you'd bought an Atari Jaguar in 1994, that was when 3D was still very new. So this would still be, I don't know, it would be interesting to play it. But to me, it sort of feels more like a, like the sort of game that you'd find on a, a home computer, like the Amiga. Like a, like a really early flight simulator sort of thing. I think that's the best comparison I can make. It sort of feels like a very early flight simulator.
Uh, so I guess the, the end of the race must be that pier. That checkerboard pattern warped a little bit, didn't it? Alright, so let's take a look at another level. So what I've done here is that I've uh, I've saved some old footage before my computer broke. And this is the only thing I've got uh, of me playing the collect em up mode back in Jerome's pad. You have to collect the power balls. That kind of reminds me of Bubsy 3D. Well, we're back here again, but this is a, a completely different map as far as I can see. Oh yeah, and you get these little doorways as well. So I imagine this is his bedroom. That's a bouncy ramp. Look how simple that car looks. I know I shouldn't, but I do kind of like this game. It's very weird to see something like this because this was a proper release on an actual console. So I can only imagine that Atari just, maybe they were desperate for games. This would never have been released on the PlayStation. Right, so uh, we've jumped here to the Old West, which is another map, and I'm in a blue car this time. I've chosen Race again, and this is another fairly big map actually. Maybe this was designed to be played with two players because it's not really much of a race if you do it by yourself. Don't drive over there again. So the, the best comparison to another game on a different console I can make really would be Virtua Racing Deluxe on the 32X which I do want to do a video of. I think the Jaguar is probably more powerful than the 32X. Um, if you can imagine a 3D game like this with even less detail. But Virtua Racing Deluxe is a much, much better game. So maybe Sega were just better at making games than whoever made this. I think I've found a secret area. Ah, so it is a hidden area. This must be Dinosaur Topia. With a solid lake. Unless that's just blue grass. I did read that there was a hidden map. Perhaps I should have looked into it before I started making this video. Because this game is so simple, I am 
struggling to find things to say about it. I kind of wonder if I would have liked this game at the time. If I had owned Jaguar and I'd bought this game in 1994, would I have liked it simply because it's a 3D game? Because I do remember, for people that haven't watched any of my other videos, the first computer I had was an Amstrad CPC. Now that's, that's a very early 8-bit computer. But even that had 3D games. And something about an actual proper 3D game at the time seemed almost kind of impossible. So when you did see one, it was absolutely amazing. And I can think of a couple of examples. The first one is, is actually a series of games and they were known as uh, Freescape games. There was a series of them of about four or five different games and uh, and they were very slow paced first person exploration games uh, but because 8-bit computers were very slow at drawing polygons the games just had to be very slow and i didn't really like them very much to be quite honest with you yeah long story short i, I just didn't like them very much although in hindsight technically speaking they are quite an amazing achievement if you can imagine a game that looks a little bit like this but at about one frame per second uh, then that is what we're talking about there I could do a video of one of them one of these days but I I think the video would just be too boring. So the second example is a game called Mercenary. And that's a game that I didn't discover until much later on because my dad bought all the games. I, I didn't know about it and I, I just discovered it one day. And it was this it was this completely open planet. You start off you start off in space and you crash land on some planet. And then you quickly get to buy a, a little craft that you can fly around that's not strong enough to escape from the planet. But you have complete and total freedom to just fly around. And there's uh, underground mazes that you can discover and there's different areas of the world as, as well. It's not that impressive because it's all wireframe 3D, but... I had a lot of fun with that just flying around just because it was in 3D and it was a lot different to a lot of the other games that I had on my Amstrad. And the third example is is actually that Atari 3D game Hard Driving. I think I've pronounced that wrong. Hard Driving. Because that was converted to 8-bit computers. So it was on the ZX Spectrum Commodore 64 and it was on the Amstrad CPC. I had a copy of that but unfortunately my copy didn't work and I didn't get to try it until much later on when obviously that sort of thing is a bit obsolete after the PlayStation, PlayStation 2. But I do remember looking at the screenshots in uh, I think it was it might have been a review in uh, one of our Amstrad magazines and I looked at it and it looked it looked like it would be this amazing 3D racing game where you can drive anywhere you can do loops uh, and all this sort of stuff and my copy never worked yeah by the time I got to try it it was too late the the wow factor of playing a 3D game was lost at that point. Now it's taking me a long time to get to the, the point of what I'm trying to say here but playing this game now is a lot different to playing it in 1994 because keep in mind the Jaguar was probably the first home console that had 3D built in so it was designed with 3D in mind and anyone buying one probably would be playing 3D games for the first time so the reviews were 
terrible for club drive. I think there might have been a lot of people that were really happy just to be playing a 3D game on their console. So anyway, that is a look, a pretty long look at Club Drive. It really isn't a good game. It's pretty terrible actually, but uh, if you're like me, then you can still find some enjoyment with it. So the video ends.